Welcome to Redneck Light. Today I'm going to be showing you how to disassemble, rebuild, and re-grease a 4.5 quart KitchenAid mixer. This is a classic tilt head model with the sacrificial plastic worm gear. Uh, by design it fails before the motor fails and the repair is fairly inexpensive compared to buying a completely new one. Uh, it is a messy job but totally doable by an at-home user. Stay tuned to learn how. So the first thing you're going to need to do to get this top cover off is to punch out this pin right here. Now the correct way to do this is with a uh, punch, which looks like this, but in a pinch you can use a screwdriver with the caveat that you may ruin the screwdriver by hitting it with a hammer because it's not designed to do that. It is a little bit of a stubborn pin so you do have to use some force to knock it out. Now here's the caveat to taking this ring off. If you use a screwdriver or something, you may mar it up. However, it's very difficult to get off any other way, but it is pretty easy to come off. Now under the mixer here, there's square headed uh, bolts all the way around here that you have to take out. A lot of that grease is separated out. It still turns okay, but uh, Inspecting the gears in here. The problem is not in here. It's definitely inside the motor house Go ahead and remove these square head bolts And then there's two more square head bolts I've already removed them down here and then two more on either side at the bottom and Back here the power cords in a little notch there. You need to just kind of work Work that rubber boot out like that Take a screwdriver and kind of get in between the top and the bottom. It'll loosen it up enough, and then you can pull it up. I wasn't quite sure what I would find when I got in here. It seems things got pretty dang hot in here. So I can already see bits and pieces of this are rusted out a bit. All right, it's so right here disappeared, but this is where things went wrong. This gear right here is made out of plastic. And that plastic clearly got real hot and then it just wore completely through right here. The other thing is all that grease is kind of separated. There's this tasty white stuff and then there's like oily clear um, in here. So I don't know if it's a function of the grease breaking down because it got too hot really what happened in here looking inside the motor housing number one when I took the uh, housing off this gasket actually tore so I'm going to need to get a new gasket here the uh, the shaft right there honestly that looks like rust to me I don't know if it's just really carbonized and burned grease or if that just truly is rust so from what I could conclude here um, moisture did get into the housing somehow that's what caused the separation. That's what caused all the corrosion and all the brown bits in there. There's a lot of surface corrosion on that uh, main gear at the bottom. I didn't bother doing it, but you could put it on a wire wheel to get some of the corrosion off and clean it up. Really what you'll end up having to do in any case, uh, whether you find corrosion or not, is use soap and water and just thoroughly clean um, all the pieces out, especially in the uh, lower housing. The upper housing might be more tricky because you've got the uh, motor there. You can't really go ham on it with uh, water and soap. And that grease is just, it gets everywhere and it's really hard to clean up. Just do the best you can. Um, the new grease that you put in will displace a lot of the old grease that's left behind. So just do as best you can. You don't have to go crazy. Um, I cleaned these uh, bits and pieces off as best, uh, as best I could. Um, I got most of the grease off. This, this is the main thing we need to replace because you can see there's a big worn out piece right there. At some point moisture got into my gearbox and I really didn't help it because some of this is surface rust from when I cleaned these parts. But, uh, but really what you want to do is definitely don't get water on this part because obviously the motor's part of it and just clean up as much as you can. Uh, this little thing comes out, clean that off as best you can, get all the old uh, grease out of it because um, we're going to replace it. Now there's all kinds of rebuild kits you can get online that come with their own grease, but I've seen some pretty bad reviews on them. 
So I went a little overkill. This is uh, mobile grease. So this is the grease that they use in industrial uh, food machines, which means it's food safe, which is what you need uh, for any incidental food contact, like if any grease leaks out of this, uh, if it accidentally touches food, it's not gonna be a hazard. But it's really not that expensive. I'll put a link in the description. Um, and this is way more than I'm gonna need. Uh, you only need about four ounces. This is 14 ounces. We only need about four or five ounces for this gearbox. So, you know, maybe about that much of this grease will go in there. Now, originally I tried to just replace the gear in this housing, but because of the corrosion and the heat that was involved, um, the bushings that were in the housing had expanded and weren't allowing the shaft to turn. Plus there was a lot of corrosion on the shaft itself. So it ended up just being easier and probably better in the long run to just replace this entire housing. The housing's available on Amazon. There's a lot of comments that the machining isn't very good. And uh, you'll see in a minute, in my case, that's true. One of the dowel holes was a little too small. It's easy to overcome that type of uh, issue. Uh, just be aware that some of these housings may not be the right size. But if you're in my situation where the shaft does not turn very freely, you've got lots of corrosion or those bushings, or those bushings have swelled up, that you will have to replace this entire assembly. I went ahead and ordered a new worm gear housing because my old one, the bushings were shot on it. Oh yeah, that rolls much nicer. If we compare it to the old housing here, I don't see any <coughs> terrible machining errors or discrepancies here. The uh, plastic bushing on mine had gotten so hot that it had melted and expanded and there was no way that the shaft was going to turn anymore. So now this housing goes here. There's two dowels. The two dowels line up with the two holes on here and then there's three uh, screw holes. And yeah, that was what I was kind of scared of. So some of the comments online said that the machining on this housing um, is a little bit off. This hole is not quite big enough to fit over that dowel. Now, the other one is, but uh, this one is just a tad too small. There's a few different ways you could do this. You could ream it out um, with a drill bit and everything. I think what I'm going to elect to do is uh, use my clearancing tool here. There. With this the name of the game is using more than you need. So we're going to put a generous amount on top of and underneath this here gasket along the shaft there. Don't worry about making a mess. It's much better to have more, too much grease than not enough in this kind of application. We're going to go ahead and push that down in there. Lined up with the dowels and uh, with my little clearance uh, clearancing there. And uh, while we're at it, I'm going to go ahead and pack grease as best I can into all the crevices of this worm gear and really try to pack it in to get into all of the different crevices and pieces. This grease is fairly thick. It's not like you can just slap a bunch on top of the gears and then just expect it to penetrate its way in. you got to help it a little bit. But we're just going to put a ton down here on this lower uh, worm gear, like so. I'll go ahead and screw that down. If you've got a nice screwdriver now, is probably not the time to use it because you will get it very greasy. So right here we've got the uh, upper housing. Um, as you can see, mine is very corroded. I cleaned out as much grease as I could. I didn't go crazy with uh, soap and water and everything just because the motor's right there. Uh, but I'm just going to entomb this in grease, get a bunch of grease here, a bunch of grease down in here, and just try to pack all of those gears um, with as much grease as I can in here. And like I said, err on the side of too much grease uh, than not enough. In addition to that, I'm going to pack a ton of grease right here on top of this and just kind of all around these gears here. So like I said, be real real generous with the grease. You've got a big old tube 
full of it if you uh, got the uh, mobile grease. And it is a messy job. And there's no shame in uh, wearing gloves. You can kind of manually turn, put a ton of grease right up in here. Like I said, you're you're almost aiming to make a mess uh, with this. We're just really trying to go nuts. All right, so there you can see the very heavily greased uh, bits and pieces of the KitchenAid mixer. And that's, we're going to use more a little bit later. There's still another uh, compartment down underneath this that we'll need to grease up. But now what I want to do is um, wipe down the mating surface here so there's not an excess amount of grease on here. And honestly, it's okay if there's some grease on this surface. We're just trying to take the excess off. There being a little bit there shouldn't be a big deal. Make sure you're happy with the amount of grease you've put on. Carefully put the housing back on top. Come straight down there. The shaft should line up with a hole at the top here. Make sure you don't pinch the uh, wires on the motor in the back and then just come down straight. Now down here we're going to start by putting all the screws back in um, under this part and then once I've got the screws in more grease because uh, we need to grease up that and uh, this lower piece since there's more gears um, at work in here. So when you're putting these in just start them out until they're snug. Okay, I don't know if this is strictly necessary, but if we're going to do it like a car, you want to start on one of these and then make a star pattern to uh, kind of get your torque even on all this. I really don't think it's necessary in this case, but I'm going to do it anyway. All right, a bit more grease here. We're going to lather up the gears in here. Last little bit down here. Now this will be a little hard to see, but there's a hole on this and then a hole on that. That's where that uh, dowel, that dowel is going to fit to uh, attach this. So you're going to push this up and uh, move it back and forth to get it to line up with the gears. Take that dowel, put it in. Fun fact: you can use the other side of the punch to help. Hammer this in. So now that dowel's locked in there. You'll probably notice little bits of seepage around the edge of your mixer here. You just kind of wipe that off. Uh, you can give it a little bit of a better, better cleanup at the end here. You got your beauty ring here, or drip ring, whatever you call it. That just kind of pushes back into place. You don't even really need to hammer it or anything. Now the very back of this, you're going to push the uh, power cord um, boot back into its uh, slot here. Make sure everything looks okay. And, uh, test the uh, switch, make sure it looks like it's moving okay. And then it's just one Phillips head screw on top. So now we're going to have the moment of truth here. We're going to start it at the slowest speed, uh, just kind of let the grease uh, work its way into the gears. If you hear any kind of grinding or uh, the gears stop or something doesn't seem right, we'll stop and maybe open it back up to just evaluate. But uh, at this point, really, you're just listening for a uh, really loud gearbox, uh, grinding, something out of place. Now you might hear this noise that sounds like it's grinding, but that's actually the grease all squishing around and getting into the different crevices and things. But really it feels nice and smooth. You can see the output shaft spinning up here. Let's speed it up just a little bit. kind of check around. There'll still be a little grease. One thing you'll have to do after you're done with this is really wipe off and clean 
the uh, outside of the mixer. It's going to be unavoidable to get some grease out here. This little um, this little decorative ring actually comes off. There's two screws in the back, so you can kind of get underneath it if you need to. Um, but really, as long as you're not seeing like excessive amount of uh, grease uh, seeping out, you, know, you might get a little bit down here. Um, this is the whole reason why you use um, food grade grease is just for incidental contact. I mean, it shouldn't be like dripping out or doing anything crazy like that. Um, all you're really looking for excessive seeping, excessive dripping. So yeah, everything looks great on this. I'm not hearing any issues at all in here. So hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, my uh, mixer probably doesn't have a lot of days in front of it just because it had that corrosion in there. Um, I'm expecting to get a few more years out of it until I just break down and buy a bigger one because I've been using it a lot more lately which is probably why it failed. I would let it sit for so long for so many years and then just started using it a whole bunch for bread and pizza and stuff like that. So next time I'll just know to get a bigger one. However, even the bigger ones eventually do need service, eventually might need new grease. So uh, I would say overall it's a messy procedure, but it is a doable procedure for an uh, at-home user. So hope you enjoyed the video. I'll have everything that I used um, in the description, um, where to get it. Uh, if you use my affiliate links, it, it helps out a lot. Please like and subscribe. Uh, let me know what you think of the video, uh, and we'll see you next time.